Number 8, Ferrystone Road in North London, is a house that has been surrounded in mystery for some years now. Events which seem to have begun in the 1920s when the people living in the house at the time were experiencing what was to all intents and purposes a haunting. Even to this day there are still reports in the local press that would suggest that number 8 Ferrystone Road is still haunted. As part of this investigation by the BPOS, I had an opportunity to speak to the present owner. I would like to point out that during filming we actually recorded a mysterious tapping sound which press reports in the 1920s had described as a method used by one previous occupant at this time as a means he employed to communicate with the spirits of the dead. We have left this footage completely unedited. Pauline, can I just ask you first, how long have you actually lived in, in the house here? Only 18 months. And I understand there's been some quite weird goings on to put it mildly. Oh definitely. Yeah. My cat picks up on it, not me, for much. But uh, when we started digging the garden we came across this stone here. And if you dig actually down, it's a flight of stairs. We got down to about four stairs and then we stopped. I gather we are actually standing on an old what seems to be an old graveyard, which is per part of a, a ruined church, over yes. in the distance. Definitely. Well, there's actually an old grave there, but it hasn't actually got the top on it. But it's half in my garden, half in next doors. Yeah. My neighbours on the other side have actually found headstone in their garden, so... Yeah. Did they have any inscription on it when they found it? The Reverend uh, John Smith and family. But he was an actual vicar? Yeah. Obviously, he must have been a vicar's <laughs> Reverend. <laughs> well, it might not have been. He might just have used that name. You know, well, we would never know. Let's assume he was a bit. But, um, like this, actually goes back. Everybody kept telling me it was probably something from the war. It was probably. But I don't think it is. Because we actually put water in there. Yeah. And um, it went and went and went and went for about eight hours. And we never ever found out where the level was. Right. So I think this could probably be an old crypt. But, uh, Just going back to what you said about war, possibly war. Wasn't there a date on this headstone that they found? Of yeah, the it was the 1800s. Well, it couldn't really, that sort of rules out yeah. that particular grave being. Well, the thing is that the only thing that could have happened is when they dropped the bombs on Hornsey Station, shrapnel. But I mean, I don't actually see how a whole headstone yeah. would actually come to light. It does seem quite strange. Yeah. But I know we're in the garden, but would it be a bit wild to assume that perhaps the actual house itself, or not only your house, but the adjoining houses are actually built on the, on a graveyard? Well, when I got in touch with the Historical Society, they don't know. that All they've got is a dotted line, and they can't actually tell you where the graveyard stopped and when they started rebuilding. So. Because all this is classed as glebe land, and if you look at the old historical papers, yeah. um, all this is known as is the glee. So I don't think they really know. But well, there's no official record. Not really. So, but it could be, it could well be that this isn't a, a, a part of the original graveyard. Oh definitely, definitely. I, I don't see why not. Mm. Because um, from what I understand from the historical society, is that these houses were built late 1800s, early 1900s and basically before that there was no actual problem with building on old graves. Mm. This didn't really come in until sort of the very early 1900s 
when people started getting a little bit worried about where they were living. I've, I've, I've done a bit of checking myself in a limited way. I understand the last burial in this city, well the graveyard is over there, yeah. that's definite. Yeah. Um, but if this was a graveyard, it was in a, I think it was 1892, wasn't it? Something yeah. like that. Yeah, it was the late 1800s. And since then it hasn't really been used at all. No. And it's become overgrown and derelict, yeah. I suppose, at that period. But it's a shame, but yeah. I mean, you know, like half the graves over there you can't find. And I mean, there is a sort of memorial to where the graves are, but they can't even tell you who's buried in most of them. Mm. You know, which is a great shame, but, um, you know, there's graves going right up into the tree over there. Yeah. You know, if you go into the graveyard itself. But, I mean, that is definitely a grave that's never, ever been finished. Yeah. Because it's half in my garden, half in next doors. And, uh, I understand you actually did the garden up didn't you so if you hadn't yeah. done that, that that would still be here there um, oh yeah we unknown. uncovered that yeah but, um, you know a lot of the stuff that we're finding in the garden is actually old grave stones mm. but um, some of it's got pieces of writing on others haven't but yeah. could I ask you a bit about the house, because I understand there's been some strange happenings in there. Well, so I understand, yes, yes. Well, are you being <laughs> modest because it actually happened to you? Or you um, sent something or the cat picked something up? Or? Well, no, no. I mean, we've seen sort of strange things. Um, when I first moved in, in my living room, I used to have a sideboard right across the front of the window. And there was one evening we were sitting there and this puff of smoke sort of just went up but it imploded it didn't sort of just disappear well, where did it seem to come from the corner but i mean then if you go into the hallway where the door is and the light switches are the cat used to sit there for hours and the hairs on its back used to go straight up and it just used to run away. And plus the fact you could sit there some evenings, I mean, it'd be 70, 80 degrees in the living room, but one side of you would be icy cold and the other side would be warm. I mean, it's... Strange to say the least. Well, I mean, I know the house was supposedly haunted, I mean, but... I can't say that whatever is there is a problem because it isn't. But uh, I mean, it's quite friendly. <laughs> yeah, I know. There were some reports. It's interesting what you said about disturbances here in the nineteen. Was it the nineteen twenties? Nineteen twenties. Yeah. Apparently, a whole family who lived there at that time was affected by. Well, you see, like I think the problem is that. The house has obviously been renovated and cut into three, well, four separate flats now. And, um, like, where the problem seems to be is probably where the kitchen was. Right. Because the other houses that haven't been renovated, the whole of my top floor is all one room. Uh, yeah, apparently, can you just remind me what actually happened? Well, what supposedly happened to this family who were living here in the 1920s? Wasn't there some reports about a... Well, it, I think they actually put it down to a poltergeist in the end. But, I mean, they did have somebody in to exercise the house and... Uh, um, and he was a reverend, wasn't he, obviously, at yeah. the church. And, um, it was from some church down in Bound Square. Well, they must have taken it pretty seriously, yeah. so called in the church to... Well, by all accounts, when they actually called the police round here once, there was actually coal. Now, that, 
Well, we're going back to 1922. Yeah. So there was yeah. actually coal flying around and, um, you know, obviously I wasn't here then. No, so. neither was <laughs> I. And wasn't the spectre, I might have got this wrong, because I'm only going by local reports, it's a long time yeah. ago, wasn't there something to do with the, the spectre of a woman or something? Yeah. It was supposed to have been one of the children's mother that had died. Um, it's never actually been proven, but um, it's possible. Mm. You know, I mean, I haven't got a problem living in the house. You know, but um, it is very cold. There are cer certain cold spots in the house. Mm. But we put that down to the fact that it's been renovated and not done very well. But, um you say about 1920s? Well, in the 1920s, this used to be a family house, whereas now it's been split into four flats. Mm -hmm. But this whole floor was one room. Mm -hmm. So I should imagine the ground floor was probably the cellars. Mm -hmm. Upstairs were the bedrooms. Mm -hmm. But this was sort of a dining room oh, come yeah. kitchen. Yeah. Of course that wall wouldn't have probably been there then, yeah. would it? And so um, uh, I mean like, I've got a living room, bathroom and a kitchen. So yeah, that's interesting because you said about the on the corner we were talking about just now. Didn't you say there was also something in the hallway out there? Yeah, in the hallway. I mean, there, there's a cold spot there which is mm. continuous. Is but, that, I mean, the only person who picks up on that is the cat. That's where the cat used to sit. Yeah. And his hairs used to rise. Yeah. It's now. It doesn't seem to bother it so much now. I think it's got used to it. Mm. But, As you said, it's probably without being frivolous, a friendly ghost. I think it is now. I mean, I know that the house was exercised years ago, mm. but I mean, there's never a problem now. I mean, I, mean, I know that the house was exercised years ago, mm. but I mean, there's never a problem now. I mean, what, one thing I meant to, because I'm not quite clear on this, you know when the vicar was called in, in Oh, back in the 1920s. Mm. Were there any further problems to your eyes after we, after we finished the session? Nobody knows. Nobody knows. So Nobody knows. Big brothers would find out then, wouldn't they? Well, unless... I mean, all we can talk to people, all we can do is talk to people in the present time. Yeah. We can't really go back in time and ask them. Well, I mean, unless anybody was living around here at that time, I mean, but I don't know of anybody. Mm. So. I just want to know, I think we've gone over most things, but is there anything else at all you can think of that's happening? Not really. You know, I mean, other than sometimes it's very cold, but I don't really take any notice of that. Mm. I mean, as long as I don't get <coughs> any aggravation, <laughs> which I don't. I mean, there's... So I like the place. I mean, it's... Um, it's a question of... Uh, that you've learned to live with it. Well, obviously, yeah. yeah. I'd like to know what that noise was. Well, we did probably the thing. ghost. <laughs> we we did. That's why I stopped. I'm just presuming it's Sunday outside doing some work in the garden. <laughs> probably hope, the cat. Let's, let's hope that's what it was. <laughs> probably the cat. And if you dig actually down, it's a flight of stairs. We got down to about four stairs. And then we stopped. I gather we are actually standing on an old, what seems to be an old graveyard, which is per part of a ruined church over the yes, distance. Definitely. Well, there's actually an old grave there. But it hasn't actually got the top on it. But it's half in my garden, half in next door.
Number 8, Ferrystone Road in North London, is a house that has been surrounded in mystery for some years now. Events which seem to have begun in the 1920s when the people living in the house at the time were experiencing what was to all intents and purposes a haunting. Even to this day there are still reports. Yeah. My neighbours on the other side have actually found headstone in their garden, so yeah. Yeah. it's not a Did it have any inscription when they found it? The Reverend uh, John Smith and family. But he was an actual vicar? Yeah. Obviously, he must have been his cool forever. Well, he might not have been. He might just have used that name. You know, well, we would never know. Let's just assume he was a vicar. But um, like this actually goes back. Everybody kept telling me it was probably... Reports in the local press that would suggest that number 8 Ferrystone Road is still haunted. As part of this investigation by the BPOS, I had an opportunity to speak to the present owner. I would like to point out that during filming, we actually recorded a mysterious tapping sound, which press reports in the 1920s had described as a method used by one previous occupant at this time as a means he employed to communicate with the spirits of the dead. We have left this footage completely unedited. Pauline, can I just ask you first, how long have you actually lived in, in the house here? Only 18 months. And I understand there's been some quite weird goings on, to put it mildly. Oh, definitely. Yeah. My cat picks up on it, not me, so much. But uh, when we started digging the garden, we came across this stone here. 